What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video here on Lot and Proud. I've gotten this question a lot and I'm finally going to try to address it. I've gotten asked, why does Nasty Red idle so high? Because for 12 valve, of course, you're supposed to idle between like 350 and 550 uh, RPM. And this thing idles at just about 1,000, which is nice when it's really cold outside. But in reality, you don't want it idling as high all the time. And so what we're going to try to do today is lower that idle again. We raised it because we thought a low idle was causing a problem of it cutting out. I don't think that was the issue. The issue was the truck was always on like a quarter tank and apparently if it gets below a quarter tank and the fuel shifts around in the tank, somehow, even though it has an in-tank fleece sump, somehow pulls in air randomly and it'll like kill the truck. I don't know why, but it'll do that if it gets below a quarter, like between a quarter and an eighth. So we're gonna try to lower the idle today and get it down to about 500 if I can, and that's gonna be the goal. So let me show you where it's at right now. So of course, you know, those of you who love 12 valves and you love the sound of them, the general 12 valve idle is right or right below that nick right there is where you want it, which is about 550 uh, RPM. But this one is just about a thousand, which we set it like that because we thought it was having a low idle issue and it, it kept killing the truck. But that, that's actually not the problem. We're gonna try to raise that today. It's a very simple fix, but I wanna show you guys for the people that don't know. Now we should be good on the idle adjustment. It should be right around 500 if I did this properly and then I'll show you what I did. Much better for a 12 valve, okay? Much, much better. And like I already showed you previously, it idled about a thousand. So we wanted it to be cut down in half and I'll show you how I did this. Now you should be looking at your idle adjustment screw and that bottom nut, you have to loosen it. It's a 10 millimeter. You put a 10 millimeter on the top bolt and then you put a 10 millimeter wrench on the nut. You crack it loose. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna thread that bolt either in or out depending on if you need to raise or lower your idle and then once you've got your idle right about where you want it put your 10 millimeter on the top and take another 10 millimeter on the bottom nut hold the top in place and crank that bottom nut tight and then you're good to go your idle's changed and just so you guys have a clear visual of where this is actually at you're going to go below your amc housing okay you can see the shutoff solenoid still and then you're going to keep going down and then it's straight back towards the cab more. Right back in there, if I can get it to you. Right back in there is where it's at. So again, it's directly below your AFC housing and your fuel shutoff solenoid, just below like the back portion of your AFC housing. That's where your linkage is. And you can easily feel it by just feeling for your linkage back there. And there's gonna be like a rocker arm kind of shaped and it kind of sets back on a bolt head. And that's how you, you know, if you tighten that up in more, it's gonna make your idle higher. If you lower that bolt head down, it's gonna make your idle lower. But that's how you adjust the idle on a P-pump. In terms of the VE pump 12 valves, I'm not sure. And it's a super easy way to do it with 10 millimeter wrenches.
Got to haul some hay bales over to Reagan and I's place for the sheep and horse for the winter. So we got some third cutting bales from dad. Got nasty loaded down, two bales on the bed, one bale on the trailer with a tractor. I tried to keep the tractor back as far as I could on flat uh, deck because we already have, you know, obviously a bale up towards the front, you know, on the loader. So that already puts weight up front and we've already got tons of weight on the bed too. So I'm trying to keep as much as I can spare from being on the rear end of this thing I'm trying because it's already, um, it's already got quite a bit of weight there, but you can see the weight on the tires here. We're not going far though, about five, six miles. Not bad, not bad. Should be in good shape. So um, just making a real short trip over here to get these unloaded, but the nasty red doing what it's built for. So I have a confession to make. I told you guys I was going to be giving away Nasty Red, which there may be a day down the road. I do that. However, for those of you that have the hopes and the dreams that this would be our next giveaway truck after this black third gen giveaway is over, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but that will not be happening anymore. I've grown to like Nasty Red a lot, like a lot. Reagan's been begging me to keep it as well. And um, it's just, it's the perfect it's the perfect truck and trailer combination for us. I mean, it just looks mean, it looks aggressive, and the diamond plate black flatbed with the black trailer with the diamond plate and the black diamond plate on the rear end of it. I mean, it's just a perfect combination. And even the reflective stickers and stuff, the red and white, the red and white. I mean, it just, I don't know guys, it just looks too good. Now maybe I'll get sick of it in a few months and change my mind again and say, you know what, never mind, it's going up for a giveaway. But for now, the plans have changed to keep Nasty Red just a little longer. Well guys, our 15 times limited entries are here right now towards winning this truck plus five grand. So if you guys haven't done so yet, this is a great opportunity to get in right now. 15X is gonna end on Friday night though. And then it's gonna go back to one X entry. So if you wanna get 15X for anything on the store, mystery boxes still always get 20X entries. But if you want 15X for anything you want on the store, all items are 15X right now towards winning this truck plus five grand. And the giveaway does end in about two weeks as well. It ends on October 13th. So if you haven't done so yet, you're almost out of time. 15X, we're giving you an opportunity here to get more entries, so get those entries while you can. 15X instead of one for everything on the store, only until Friday. Take advantage of that while you can, because somebody's got to take home this truck plus $5,000 cash, might as well be you. So we're over here with the 5.9 gas, okay? And I don't know, maybe you guys would like to see a video of comparing the vast differences between a 5.9 gas and a 5.9 Cummins diesel in the same model year of truck. I don't know, that's up to you guys. I don't know how many of you guys would be interested in seeing that, but I do think it'd be kind of interesting because engine displacement is one thing, but there's obviously so many differences between a V8 5.9 gas engine and a inline six, six cylinder 5.9 diesel engine. So there's there's so many differences, but I do think it'd be kind of an interesting video for people to see the difference for, for maybe for people that aren't real sure on what's the real purpose of diesel versus gas. And I got another thing for you guys. Would you guys like to see me do a complete front end rebuild on this truck? I'm talking all kinds of stuff. This thing needs all kinds of stuff. All these like little rubber grommets and bushings and stuff. Most of them are all shot. The wheel bearing on this side is bad. It could possibly use some new brakes here fairly soon. I mean, I would just try to rebuild everything that I think it might need and just get it done, like replace. So if you guys wanna see that, let me know, please because this is something that I'd like to do in the barn myself if I can. So I'd like to pull it in and just start tearing apart everything and replacing everything that I think I might need in terms of drivability in the front end. So 
you guys would be interested in that, definitely let me know. Deer season is here now, and I'd love to be able to drive this truck to the properties and to do my hunting and stuff more than I would anything else, just because the thoughts of driving this truck around make me happy and I'd love to have it road ready. I really don't wanna drive it all the way down back and forth to one of our properties that's a little further away or even 15 miles over to our other one that's a lot closer with the front end wheel bearing being bad or ball joints or whatever it may be. So I'd like to get that done, but let's get to detailing the underside of this hood. I don't think we're gonna have to do too much. It's just a little bit dusty. So I'm just gonna bring out some microfiber towels, some degreaser and get to cleaning this up. So we've got more of this stuff. This is a different type. It's engine cleaner foamy. Cleans dirt, dust and road grime, but it's not for excessive grime or grease. And I don't think this is considered excessive grime or grease. This is pretty much just road dust, a little bit of dirt, you know. A, just a little bit of nasty stuff. So I'm gonna actually try to pick these leaves out by hand here first though, because unfortunately the engine degreaser is, or cleaner is not going to, um, it's not gonna get rid of the leaves. It's not gonna make them disappear. new under the hood anymore but it does look way 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 better got everything sprayed and then i took a microfiber towel and i wiped down everything that i could get to within reason there's obviously some stuff that i just can't get to or there were some things that wiping them down weren't going to make them that much cleaner like old you know corrosion stuff isn't going to get much better with a little bit of shine and microfiber towel but for the most part it cleaned up pretty darn good you can see i got the battery shined up the wash tank fuse cover master cylinder i wiped down the plastic up on here just because i got some overspray on it and then i tried to wipe down like the manifold covers and stuff and the plastics the most this inner fender i tried to clean that up some the back of the you know firewall there a little bit as many of the hoses as I could get. This one I scrubbed and scrubbed and scrubbed. I don't know what this like colored stuff is on that hose, but it's not really wiping off. The other one's cleaned up pretty nice. So these all cleaned up pretty good. So pretty, pretty happy about it. You can actually see a little bit of reflection on those, you know, manifold covers there. But uh, yeah, looks a lot, a lot better. Like I said, like corrosion, like the bottom of this master cylinder, it's corroded at the bottom half. So like the bottom half didn't really clean up well. But um, overall, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Looks a lot better. Not something that's necessarily gonna make the truck run better, but it at least looks better when you pop the hood. Guys, that is gonna put a wrap on this video. It was short and sweet. I've got some stuff coming up in the next ones that I think you guys are gonna like. If you like the idea of doing some hands-on work on the front end of that truck, picking up another truck, picking up a tractor, you guys, you know, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Anyhow, if you guys have not done so yet, like I said, 15 X entries are live until Friday for this truck. So anything on the store gets you 15 entries for every $1 you spend right now until that deal ends and goes back to one X entry after Friday night. Um, anyways, guys, thanks so much for all the love and support and placing the orders. That is how we are able to do what we do. That's how we're able to give away the trucks. If you don't place the orders, this kind of stuff can't happen. And I just want you guys to fully understand that. So thank you guys so much. You guys are awesome. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.